<laughs> so I witnessed something beautiful in the London protests, not the one that's just gone, but the one before. And um, there was these big, beautiful, bulky men uh, in their gym t-shirts. And I wish I could remember the name of the gym. It was some gym in London. And so hopefully they'll see this. I've spoken about it often since. And a guy had dropped a bottle. He was aiming for the bin. Uh, you know, he wasn't littering at all. And so he went to pick it up. And before he could pick it up, uh, about 15 police officers semicircled him, you know, against the wall as if he was deliberately littering. Of course, the guy's trying to explain I, I was picking it up. You know, I, I'm, I'll pick it up now, you know, let me. And so you could see that that was, and these guys had witnessed it and they made their way through this wave of the crowd. And they semicircled the semicircle of officers and didn't, and I thought the message is getting across because they stood there. You can imagine the bellowing voices real close, face to face, and they just started to shout in unison, let him go, let him him go they didn't break rhythm they didn't swear they didn't say anything else other than let him go with one hand up the other hand behind their back really showing that they weren't going to show any signs of aggression no matter what the police did and it took a few minutes but those police officers started to realize that these guys aren't going to move they're just going to keep chanting let him go at which point there's 10, 15 screens or more onto the onto what is happening. And of course they let him go. And it, it, it's, a, it's a joyous occasion because they put the guy up on the shoulders like he's a piece of paper because they're all so strong and go off into the wave of people with him. And yeah. th one of them high fives one of the officers. I thought that is so powerful. It is so much more powerful than those guys going up to those officers and, and you know, screaming in their faces, trying to meet force with force. And yeah, it doesn't it, work. It doesn't, doesn't, doesn't work, Jen. It doesn't. And the greatest esoteric knowledge that I can teach is that within yourself, within your own divinities, within, you meet opposing force with opposing force. You don't you try don't. and match the forces. And so they did that just instinctively that day. They met quite an aggressive move from the police officers initially to arrest a man for doing nothing wrong. Mm. Um, but they met that with not anger and aggression. They met that with just um, righteous indignation and firm stance of this is our intent. This is what we're going to do. This is what we're not going to do. And we're going to make it known to everybody. Let's make this public. And yeah, so that and was- and I would call that assertion, yeah. Wow, it was assertion. You're right, it was assertion. Beautiful. Assertions about win-win. And I've got a question as well, Mick, because I've seen this a lot, because um, obviously I've not been on any marches as of yet, and you've been on quite a few. I'm quite troubled, well, I'm saying quite troubled, I'm very troubled by what I see are mainly male officers. They seem to be picking on lone female protesters and elderly female protesters a lot. Do you think that's to, to get a, an, an overreaction from the crowd? Yeah. Because if they if they arrest a woman, we are more likely in their minds to go and defend a woman. This is the thing that we're talking about, soldiers. You know, when it, when when a catastrophe involves collateral involving children and women, it's quite a devastating thing to experience. And and our natural instinct, I think, is to make a defence in that way for for most men. And you know, I, I don't apologise for being for saying about men and women, because ultimately you can be in a male body and be very female, and you can be a female body and be very male. So I refer to the energy you exert to achieve your goals. Um, and what I see is when you get that kind of thing going on, it's quite, it makes people volatile. Yeah. And of course it acts as a, it acts as a little warning as well. It's almost saying to people, we don't care who you are, you're going to get arrested. Yeah, there's that no, no bars, no levels to yeah, where no, we've no gone to. Because uh -huh. they've done the same with disabled people. Yeah. It doesn't yeah. matter if you're disabled, you're going to get arrested. And it's just, and it's scare tactics, you know, but, but we understand that fear gets results very, very quickly. That's why they've used so much fear.